Hello and welcome everyone to Last Level Brass. I am Mr. Black and this is my first 15 with Face of Mankind, Fall of the Dominion. And from what I understand, the name is rather ironically well earned. I have broken trend a little bit with this first 15 and done a bit of research on this game before running my first episode on it. As per usual, I have never played the game before. However, when I looked at the Steam page for it, I was really caught off guard by its incredibly dated looking graphics in the screenshots, reminding me instantly of Deus Ex, the original, not Human Revolution. And I've since come to learn that this game has been in beta for a decade. No exaggeration, since 2004, when this game was released into open beta. It was then released for retail sale in 2009, and as I understand it didn't do so well, and throughout its colored and checkered history has been cancelled a couple of times, and now sees release into free-to-play MMO status upon Steam, leading me to take a rather cynical view of it in terms of the developer's earnestness. However, all of that said, that is simply background information that I will have to work with moving into this game. I will not, at least I will attempt to not, allow it to dissuade my opinions and bias me one way or another. It simply leads me to really wonder about this game a great deal. So, let's waste no more time and click play. Um, I get to create a character, alright then. As you can see, very dated looking graphics. Alright, I can choose male or female. I will be a man. And skin tone, what have we? Okay. We've got two skin tones. White and black, dark tan, whatever you want to call it. So, I'm a white guy. Alright then. That's not a lot of variety at all. How about face presets? Oh god, 70s porn stash. No, thank you. Interesting little checker pattern. Lots of facial ornamentation. I would like to be able to zoom, please. That would be fantastic. Amadala makeup. Angry Joe. Fu Manchu. And that's that's not too far from me, so I may have to default from that. What else have we? Um Duschstein. That that's not that's not terrible. Alright. Let's see. How how many more of these are there? Quite a few, actually. So thankfully, there does seem to be some amount. Uh, facial variety, which is always a nice relief when it comes to games that use presets rather than allowing for sliders, which this definitely predates. I think I will not actually go with the full beard. I think I'll go with this one, seeing as I don't like the actual facial shape of the beard. How about hairstyle? Oh, dear God, can I please get rid of the faux horns? All right, then. What else have we? Oh, oh my. This, this could get ugly. That... That's good enough. Not not quite. Tell you what, I think I'm just going to finalize my character creation and let you all catch up to me in a moment. There, I found a suitable and acceptable hair for me. I'm not too fond exactly of that color, but it'll have to do. As for starting clothes, what have we? Biker jacket, weird futuristic t-shirts, and an absurdly detailed Trench coat of sorts. All right, that'll just that'll just have to work. What about for the lower body? Okay, I think I will not actually go with the matching pants to the coat, as that looks. I don't know. Maybe acceptable. Why not? I guess I will go with that. What about shoes? Oh my! Oh, those those are fabulous. All right, what else can we rock? Combat boots, sort of. Kind of. I don't know. Are there any other... Oh, pointy shoes. Alright, so, uh, combat-ish boots it is. Color me, not so hooked. But let's click next. Wow, could your font be any smaller? I apologize to all of you who probably will never be able to read that, even if I render this in 1080p. 
Hello, citizen, and welcome to Face of Mankind. During your journey through the, through the universe, you will encounter many different kinds of people with different goals. Face of Mankind is all about social interaction, so try to communicate with other players and work together to achieve goals. You can find open faction applications in the Faction Manager tab. Factions pay and support their members while working toward a common goal. As I understand it, this is a sort of blend of more traditional MMOs with players actually running about as their character in fully rendered 3D environments, but uses a great deal of player freedom in terms of the founding of factions, of corporations, and other things that very, very strongly remind me of EVE Online. What I'm hoping to find here is that they're rather elegantly implemented and not just aped from EVE Online, because in a game not necessarily built for that, it could be rather contrived. So, let's move on with the explanation. Players and factions gain power through economic and militaristic force. In order to produce items, one must first obtain raw materials. So, that would be where the player-driven economy comes in. These can be found by using a mining tool or mining rig to extract minerals from rock surfaces on designating mining colonies and areas. These minerals can be recycled for a small amount of universal credits or refined into goods use schematics. What happened to that sentence? Players can also specialize in different types of weapons and armor to perform better in combat. Those who excel in combat can invest in tracking and start accepting bounty contracts through the bounty manager. Some players will be known for their excellent espionage skills. World services, barriers, loot packs, and apartments all need to be hacked in order to control or access them. There are different security levels, so different types of hacking devices and different class devices are required. After you complete your character creation and leave your apartment, you will be sent to New York City, Brooklyn. There, you will find a tutorial NPC which will teach you all of the basics and give you the skills, money, and equipment you'll need to get started in the world. Whew, okay. So, it looks like this is going to be a fairly reading-intensive game, so I apologize right away if this first 15 goes well over my usual time limit. It seems as though there's going to be a lot of information to digest, and not necessarily a uh, quick, expedient, I don't know, expedited path upon which to digest the said information, so I'll try to move as quickly as I can while not keeping myself in the dark. Alright, I'll roll forward with that name, and I'm not going to take the time to type a full biography for now, so for now, subject unknown. I hope that's something that, should I actually find myself interested in this game, I can go back and custom tailor later. If not, I'll simply regret that. And now we find what happens from here. Loading world, NYC, Brooklyn with a really, really dated loading screen. All right, that didn't actually take terribly long. So what's happening here? Let me phase out of everyone else and find perspective wall. Warning, optical illusion. Okay, then press E to talk. Arena, welcome NPC. All righty then, let's see. Hello and welcome to Face of Mankind, Fall of the Dominion Universe. You are about to embark on an epic venture through the stars in which you can make a name for yourself and your friends. What will happen in your venture, you may ask? Well, that's entirely up to you. You can become an economic mogul, a drug kingpin, a warlord, a bounty hunter, or even your own unique position in the galaxy. It's all up to you and the decisions you make. Firstly, you will need to get acquainted with your heads-up display. Head on over to Derek at the information desk area to my right for more information. All right, then. Except, and that's going to be to her right, meaning... Apartments, perspective wall, I don't know, this guy, the guy with the star above his head. You, Derek, speak. Why, hello there, fellow clone. Right. I assume Miranda sent you here to learn about your vitals, so that's what I'm going to tell you about. Listen up, because I am only going to tell you this once. In the top left of your, of your screen, you will see your vital statistics. At the center, you see a projection of your cloned body. This projection changes depending on if you have armor equipped. If you do, it gains a light blue tint. However, the less durable your armor is, the lighter the tint, so keep an eye on it and make sure you don't get caught without a chest piece in a firefight. The red bar to the right of it is your clone's health. This bar fluctuates depending upon the damage you take. Damage from falling, getting hit by enemy weapons, or even those adorable xenomorph creatures will all affect this. When it hits 0%, your body will send your data back to the cloning facilities where you will get a new body. This is coming off exactly like EVE Online, and not necessarily in a we thought of the same sort of thing at the same sort of time sort of way, and more in a we saw it, we liked it, so we stole it kind of way. Moving on, that yellow bar, oh yes, that's your bio energy. Your clone outputs an energy source that is usable by- Why is that music so much louder than what was already there? 
Usable by augmentations you may install, such as a shoulder lamp or a mineral scanner. Have you ever been bitten by a poisonous xenomorph? No. Well, if you get bit, the toxins will immediately drain your aura, which is that green bar you see there. And why is it getting louder? I don't like to have to shout over games. As this lowers, your mobility and vision become hindered. Eventually, when this hits zero, you'll be unable to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm getting bored. Finally, we have the blue stamina bar. This is my favorite, actually. This bar indicates how much stamina your clone currently has. You use stamina for things such as sprinting and jumping around. Fortunately, this one restores as you rest. You can sit or lay to restore it faster compared to just walking it. There is a blatant typo in your tutorial that is unacceptable. I'm sorry. That's all I have for you on my agenda, especially given that this has been 10 years in development. You may walk to Victonia at the other desk. She usually fills in whatever I left out. What on earth could you have left out after all of that? My god, all right, well, I thought in my actual PC mixer I had adjusted sounds properly, but this is throwing really loud crap at me right now that I would like to be able to turn down. Hitting escape did not bring up an actual menu of any sort. How do I get to options? Are there options? I don't know. How do I even exit this game at this rate? Seriously. Hitting escape does nothing but bring up my character sheet. I... is it tab? Am I missing something? Okay, so I can move my mouse while that is up. Um... That's all just chats. Is it that green thing? No. I keep seeing... There we are, there's a communicator popping up here. And that doesn't really tell me anything. Okay, system. You've been added to the faction Dolly Incorporated. Well, I'm representing classy folks then. Okay then, so there's a calculator, a notepad, and a browser built in. Definitely coming across more like EVE Online by the second. Mm, pardon me. And as a quick note, regarding this game's graphics, I recognize that... The game is a decade old. I get that. And I will cut it a very small break for that. But these animations are atrocious. Texture quality, not actually terribly bad. Model quality, terribly bad. And while there are going to be those that will disagree vehemently with me regarding any criticism for a game this old, especially those who are longtime fans of it, I will simply point you to the game that this takes so very much inspiration from EVE Online and direct you to comparison screenshots from when that game was 10 years old, which it is by this point, and now what it looks like today. The two are nigh irreconcilable insofar as that game has improved graphically and much, much less functionally so very much. So if one Icelandic studio can develop a game and update it to keep it relevant over such a long time. There's no excuse for other games that have changed hands so many times, fed off the money of so many people, even enjoyed a $60,000 Kickstarter last year. And yet this is as good as it looks? I can't give it very much credit in that regard. Now, I suppose I will- why- uh, nice, nice rifle there, buddy. I suppose I will attempt to cut this game a little bit of a break and deal with the lack of ability to exit it short of control alt delete after I wrap my recording. Let's see what Victoria has for us. Derek is quite the fellow, don't you think? No, no, I don't think. I think he's boring and forgettable. No? No, that's okay. I don't like him either. Good. I bet he didn't even tell you about the quick slots near your vitals. He didn't? Oh, I knew it. Will allow me to educate you? Please don't. Below your vitals is a set of quick slots. The first three are red and can hold your weapons. Simply press the key associated with each slot to switch to weaponry or put it away. The four slots under that hold your consumable items. Boosters, foods, meds, and injectors. Simply drag a consumable to one of those slots and you can consume one on the fly with the press of a button. I know how hotkeys work. Thank you. I know they were very groundbreaking back in the 2004 that they weren't groundbreaking in, but go on, please. To the right of your vitals, you will find your installed augmentations. You can activate them with the assigned keys. Okay, yeah, so now you know, unfortunately, the boss lady didn't give me anything else yet, so you may want to talk to Arena again. She tends to keep the best stuff to herself. Uh, then that just makes her a frigid bitch, doesn't it? All right, then. What's up, dude? Nice, uh, nice glitch and sit animation you got going on. Mr. Samson? All right. 
You again? Well, welcome back. Why are you here? Why, why would you seem surprised if you clearly didn't tell me anything? Oh, Victoria told you that I'm withholding information from them so I can tell you myself. Well, she's right. I have so much fun teaching about these things that I just can't let anyone else do it. Are we done yet? In the top right, you will find a layout of the map and the services in the area. As you move, the map will allow you icons. The icons and get something different. You will learn something. Okay, icons, map. I get it. Dear God. Below that, you will find all of your current objectives, if you have any from Dolly Incorporated. You can complete your objectives through the list. On the bottom left, you have your communicator. The different tabs allow you to converse with people. I know how chat boxes work. Thank you. On your communicator, you also have four buttons. One will allow you to add friends. From there, you can see if they are online and speak with them in private chat. Below that, you can add people to your mute list. Finally, you have a pre-programmed set of motions your clone can perform. I know how emotes work. Emotes work. Thank you. That's really all there is for your display. I think it's time to get out there and explore what the worlds have to offer. Speak with Brett over there at the perspective wall, and he will guide you from there. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so, perspective wall. That is that way. Right? Right? Is this is this Will Smith over here? No, that's Rax. Okay. Um, where? Perspective wall is... No, nowhere. So, does that mean it's this way? No. Where are these people? Okay. Is it over... I, I don't know. Oh, this guy. Okay, all right then. I should pay attention to my map the way she told me. All right, you're the one with the yellow dot. Who, who are who are you? All right. Hey there. I'm not ready for you just yet. Well, too freaking bad. Head over to the apartment complex to the south and talk to Erica. She'll give you something to do while I finish this. Really? I'm sorry. I don't miss the fact that they're trying to characterize him as a busy man who just probably a little too busy for us because we're just the new scrubs. But. Uh, that's not the sort of writing that endears me to your game, developers. To be brushed off by an NPC? Uh, mm. Irritating. Not endearing. Not charming. Not at all the sort of, like, gritty, rigid character that things like Shadowrun tend to actually have. The tabletop version, mind you, not the uh, rather underwhelming PC release we were all recently treated to. All right, fine. Where to now? I suppose that means that I get to follow more of my map. Hey there, Erica. Hey there, baby. This here it's an apartment complex. I couldn't tell. And from this little service, you can, you guessed it, enter or buy an apartment. This really is written like it was made 10 years ago. Not in a good way. Of course, that can be dangerous. I hear there are certain scanners that will let people break into your apartment whenever you have the vortex particles around you. Just some word of advice. Be careful when you enter your apartment or log off. If you get scanned, any items in your apartment will be up for grabs. It's a dangerous world out there. Take a look at the terminal, familiarize yourself with it, and then head back to Brett. So, I understand that this game possesses a uh, persistent world. I don't necessarily like the idea of my persistent world apartment being vulnerable to player burglarization. That just seems like it's rife for trolling and griefing. And like there's a very good chance that any amount of accomplishment that I get with this game, if I'm not just an all out hardcore player, may very well be snatched out from under me by someone who actually is. And that is not at all a rewarding player experience in any sense of the term. Let's move on though. Now where to? Alright, do I do I actually go to my apartment now? E to use, T to manage. Let's just use it. Public housing... Oh, Jesus. Okay. Did you know? This is the apartment manager. Using this, you'll be able to purchase and enter private apartments. Yeah, okay. Alright then. Um, enter apartment? I'm assuming that's, that's mine. Alright then. So, oh, uh, when the particles are around me. So, within this 10 second period, I'm available to be, like, hitchhiked with... I don't know. That's that's odd. I was hoping to like this game. I was. I was hoping that a lot of the Rage Quit Steam user reviews that I was reading were the product of impatient players who simply did not gave, give the game time enough to give it a chance, but I'm quickly finding that many of the complaints that I've read are in fact quite well founded. Alright, can I can I zoom in so that my camera's not like slamming into the wall and distorting every time I pan or zoom? Or not zoom, because I can't. I would like to be able to switch to first person. Okay. Alright then, is there any purpose to being in here? Any purpose whatsoever. Multicom, press E to use. Okay. So, can I actually... Yeah, okay, cool. I can change my biography whenever I want. Which I was 
mildly concerned about. Okay, apply changes. Can I go go away? There. Uh, storage. I don't have anything to store. This is my my rockin' bangin' bedroom with the Ant Ant Universe book. Wow, desolate and not necessarily in the gritty, entertaining way. Just the bland and not at all rewarding for new players kind of way. All right then, node selection, NYC Brooklyn. Eastern part of NYC with its famous botanical garden and big Brooklyn space harbor. Natural influences and modern architecture signify this area. All right then, where should I go? Let's go to the, really, the botanical garden is premium only, as is the perspective wall. Wait a minute, wasn't the perspective wall where I was? Do I just go to the default node? Maybe? Hopefully? I don't know. I'm going to wrap this soon. I don't even know if there's going to be a round two for this game because, as I've mentioned numerous times before, the first 15 series, of which this is an entry, is not at all meant to be a comprehensive review series by any means. It is a first impressions review insofar as it is really my analysis of whether or not a game has that hook that will keep me coming back. Which is to say, were I to download this on my own time, regardless of whether or not I was looking to record any content for it, would I continue playing after this? And the answer here is a resounding no. I'm bored to tears with this game. I would not have even gone this far with it already, were it not for the fact that I feel compelled to give you all at least a somewhat, um, I don't know, I, this isn't really an intricate look at the game, but at least a somewhat detailed look at it. I cannot in any way say that this game is- Why are there weapons being discharged right next to me? Um, is this something I should be concerned about? Uh, New Dominion, recruitment, uh... I'm just going to assume that those men are stressed. They're pissed off about having wasted their time with this game just like I am. And they're taking it out on everyone around them. That's what we're going to say. And I'm going to say that that's enough of that. Unless you all really want to see more of this game, unless I'm just really falling short of understanding it, of getting it, and I'm sure that there are no small number of MMO hipsters out there that are going to say that I just don't get this game. I understand. MMOs take a long time to get into. They can take weeks to fully understand, and one first 15 is not at all near to coming even close to chipping away the slightest of hunks off of that iceberg. But, again, when it comes to whether or not this game is interesting or entertaining enough to give me incentive to do the chipping away at that iceberg, no, no, absolutely not. This is a resounding failure in terms of actually keeping me coming back. So, I will keep this installed for a few days. Let me know in the comments below, I hope, actually secretly that I don't receive any of these, but I will honor these requests should I receive them if you want to see more of this game. So leave, leave your comments in the comments below and I'll punish myself if so asked. I am Mr. Black here at Last of Press, and as always, I wish you all good gaming and Godspeed.